websites can be sped up drastically by compressing the content that it serves up. A common form of data compression is gzip data compression, and gzip is commonly used in web development because the HTTP protocol includes the ability to gzip data. Often the content served up from these web servers is bundled, and a common bundler developers use is Webpack, which is what I'm using right here. And Webpack comes with a plugin that allows us to see the size of the bundles in our build. And this is useful for seeing what's contributing to the overall size of a bundle. So for example, here is my, this is a React app, and it's called client.bundle.js. And we can see this is my source code over here, and on this side is the node modules. And what it also provides is three different sizes. If you look at the tooltip from this hover, we have stat size, parsed size, and gzipped size. Stat is just the input size of the files before any transformations, such as minification. Parsed is the output size of the actual bundle. And then gzip is the size of the bundle after compression. And notice the differences here. So our stat size is 1.26 megabytes. Then after we Webpack does some minification, our parse size is 386.1 kilobytes. But then if we look at our gzip size, it's 118 kilobytes. So if we look at the difference between parsed and gzip, so after minification, we gzip it, this decreases the bundle by about three times, and in this case, even more than three times. So this means if we gzip our production bundle, we will get a faster delivery time to the client and also not take up as much bandwidth. And there are actually other Webpack plugins that would allow us to gzip a bundle when it's built, but not all clients support gzip compression, though most modern ones do. So I would rather rely on a web server like Nginx to handle the gzip process at runtime. So let me give you a demonstration of how we could do this with Nginx. So this right here is an Nginx configuration called nginx.conf, and Nginx allows us to easily configure compression and decompression of responses. And one of these compression forms is gzip, and we can easily use it by just going down and inside a HTTP context, we just set gzip to on. And once we've done that, Nginx will gzip our, its responses. However, by default, Nginx compresses only responses with the MIME type of text and HTML. So we want to compress our JavaScript as well. So we can do that with gzip types and then add application JavaScript, X JavaScript, text JavaScript, any kind of JavaScript MIME type. And also remember how not all clients accept gzipped content. So we also can use gunzip, which if the client doesn't accept gzip packages, then we can provide them a non-gzipped version. And let me actually show you this in action for my blog website. So back up here, and what we can use for this actually is we can use my Chrome extension. So my Chrome extension width scepter over here, if I get this out, let's refresh the page, and we can see we've caught all the requests. And the one we're interested in is this right here. And if we look at the headers right here, we can see accept encoding, and then it has a value gzipped, gzip, and some other values as well. If we send this request, so resend this request, and we look at the response, we can see in the response header, we have content encoding gzip. So that shows that the content is being gzipped. And if we remove this header, so we can easily do that with my Chrome extension, say I just uncheck this, but accept encoding is also an auto header, so we want to uncheck this here. If we resend this, note how now the gzip for content encoding is now gone because we're not gzipping it. But that's all I want to show you. If you like content like this, check out my courses linked in the description. Also try out this Chrome extension with Scepter. It's pretty cool. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Take it easy.